Welcome to Pharmacy Prep. My name is Ms. Babi Abani. I'm an instructor and director here at Pharmacy Prep. Today, I'd like to present to you about the COVID-19 vaccine safety and efficacy uh, high yield points. So past few months, we are all experiencing a surge into the COVID cases. And almost a year now, we have been experiencing this COVID. So in the past so many months, many students are asking about what kind of questions in board exams, like medical board exams and pharmacy and nursing board exams. So what kind of questions can come? So therefore, uh, today I'd like to present you some high yield points. So what has happened is in the past one year since the COVID has started in this early 2020, um, and since then, uh, there are a lot of information which is not um, fully understood or no credible information. However, one thing breakthrough that happened in the past, of, within past few days is the invention of the COVID vaccine. So therefore, this information about the COVID vaccine can be a potential questions in the upcoming board exams. So here, I'd like to give you some details about those, uh, what kind of high yield points are expected. So before I give you start uh, this information about the um, safety data, so I'd like to give you some basics on, on the types of vaccines manufacturing methods. So here are those some examples how the vaccines are manufactured. So first, let's begin with uh, the the older methods like past about 60 to 70 years the vaccines have been made with the two different methods of vaccines one is called live attenuated vaccines what did that means is in this um, uh, vaccine methods uh, these are uh, vac the viruses and bacteria have been used uh, to prepare the vaccines that means they are treated to be harmless and those, uh, those viruses are injected. And eventually, once those viruses are injected into the body, the body produces the antibodies of those uh, specific type of viruses. And the other type is, um, other type of, um, like for example, before I go to that, so the other types of uh, vaccine methods are whole inactivated vaccine. That means that is a uh, considered as a kill vaccines. So what that means is uh, in this vaccine methods, basically the viruses are treated to be killed. However, they're harmless again, and however, they are immunogenic. That means they can activate the immune system to produce the antibodies. So based on these old methods of uh, vaccine manufacturing, currently there are several vaccines are present in the market like mainly you will see those flu vaccines, like every year we have a seasonal flu. Those seasonal flu vaccines are found, uh, made from these methods. And then there are other methods like protein subunit method. What did that means is in this protein subunit method, basically the viral proteins are used to prepare the vaccines. Like currently there are a few vaccines are made from these protein subunits, like for example, uh, hepatitis virus vaccine is based on the protein subunit vaccines and also the shingle vaccines, which are herpes zoster shingle vaccines. Uh, basically, it is made from those protein subunits. So now what exactly the most important, the breakthrough in the inventions, I can say uh, those happen in this uh, century is one of the most important invention in the vaccines is the development of the new types of methods in uh, vaccine manufacturing. So here there is a, let's start with this one, that is a viral vector vaccine. So viral vector vaccines are basically, uh, what, what is, that means is uh, there are viruses as used as a carriers. Means vector means they are carriers so basically the virus is used as a carrier. So what exactly this virus carries? The virus carries the genetic material of a specific type of genetic sequence uh, material for producing a uh, proteins in the body. So basically here also 
this utilizes the uh, viruses. Uh, most commonly used virus for this one is adenovirus, which is a DNA type of viruses. And however, those viruses are treated to be harmless. That means they will not cause infections. And there are currently, there are two leads, uh, leading vaccines for COVID-19 vaccines uh, being uh, currently almost close to the approval process as we speak the last week of December. Uh, so AstraZeneca makes the vaccine based on these viral vector vaccines. And uh, Johnson & Johnson also making the similar vaccines. Uh, however, these vaccines are to be approved soon. So, and uh, the most important thing that has happened in this invention is genetic vaccine. I would consider this as a, one of the most important uh, invention of the century. So, uh, what is that exactly this genetic vaccine they do? Basically here, um, they use this vaccine utilizes the genetic material, uh, which is produced from the uh, synthetically produced this genetic material, like for example, mRNA, which is also known as messenger RNA technologies. So basically this messenger RNAs, uh, which is produced uh, in the same codes, uh, which is produced on uh, similar code, same codes as viruses, COVID viruses make those codes. Based on those, mRNAs are produced um, in the labs and those mRNAs are attached to the uh, a lipid nanoparticles, which is also known as LPN. What is that lipid nanoparticle? It's like a tiny, very tiny lipid bubble. Uh, basically, this lipid bubble can attach to this mRNA and this mRNA is at, are merged into these lipid particles, and then that helps to deliver this mRNA into the cell, the human cell. That means it is given as an injection, and that goes into the cell, and then it activates the immune system in the immunogenic cells, like uh, white blood cells or T cells, etc. So in this case, uh, this is something very uh, uh, this, based on this mRNA technology, it was the first vaccine that has been approved. And however, it, since I said new invention, it doesn't mean that it is just it happened within the past few months. Uh, these genetic vaccines and also viral vector vaccines have been uh, intensely researched in the past two decades or almost 25 years now. These uh, two types of methods have been researched. Scientists, uh, pharmaceutical scientists have been heavily studying these methods, how to make their vaccines. And now these methods have been uh, nicely used, uh, effectively used to develop the COVID vaccine as we going through this um, COVID um, uh, pandemic. So, so these are the vaccines. So therefore, now uh, currently, uh, I would be discussing mainly about the genetic vaccines. And uh, also later we have viral vector vaccines. So we have upcoming videos on methods of genetic vaccine. But this video is particularly focused on uh, what is that safety and efficacy of um, vaccines. So before I go to that point here, I have some important points. Uh, I was mentioning about the mRNA technologies. What exactly the, uh, I'll give you a brief overview how this mRNA technology uh, utilizes the nanoparticles to deliver uh, into the human cells so that the human cells can generate um, the uh, proteins. So here, uh, you, this is called spike proteins. This is the virus. This is, this is the COVID. Let's say this is COVID-19 virus. So this COVID-19 virus uh, is having the, on this, on this surface of this COVID-19 virus, uh, which is a, a lipid membrane of the viral, and there are proteins attached on it. There are several proteins. And these proteins present on this surface of these viruses are known as spike proteins. 
they look like a spike, therefore they are called spike proteins. So if you look at the three-dimensional structure of those proteins, they look like this. Very complicated long chain amino acid sequences. So these spike proteins plays a very important role in transmission of the viruses because you know that viruses are very, very tiny, uh, much smaller than bacteria, and they are not capable to survive on their own. So they only can survive in the host cells. Like once they got infection into the human cell, then they replicate and they make millions of uh, viruses. Otherwise, they cannot survive outside of the host cells. So this uh, spike proteins uh, utilizes the. Um, so these spike proteins are used uh, based from their um, genetic sequence, basically. Uh, gen genetic sequence of the viruses has been identified, which is called viral genome. So viral genome has been earlier in the beginning of the year, 2020 itself has been identified. So in that viral genome, they also identified, identified the genetic sequence. Let's say, for example, like you have a T, C, G, A, or T, like this is a genetic sequence that is a type of specific sequence that is responsible for producing or expressing formation of spike proteins. So now by using this genetic sequence in the lab, you can generate these same proteins. Or, so what else can be done is by using the mRNA technology. So imagine this is the mRNA, piece of the mRNA. And now you take this piece of the mRNA and attach to uh, a lipid particles, which is called lipid nanoparticles. Attach to lipid nanoparticles. So now these lipid nanoparticles have this mRNA. And this means you attach this to basically here, like this is the example, like you attach here TC. I mean, this is a, a example I'm just giving you. Not, this is not exactly the same sequence. However, just to give you an idea how it does it works. So now this mRNA is sticking to this lipid particles. And now these lipid particles are used in injections to in, uh, and injected into the human body. And once they're injected in the human body, then obviously those lipid particles will uh, dissolve and open up and then mRNA is released. And this mRNA in the human cell express this same protein as a spike proteins. So once they ex express this spike proteins, obviously now body will recognize this is a foreign substance and eventually body will, immuno, immune cells of the body will uh, make those antibodies of those proteins. So what that means is in the future or in the event if that person get the, any COVID infection, that person will have some sort of immunity which can protect this infection. So that's the major theory behind this one. However, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, this is the greatest technology and breakthrough, uh, especially the right time uh, this has been utilized. However, uh, the most pharmaceutical research scientists have been working on lipid nanoparticles for past several years, and this has been studied, and also mRNAs have been studied. So what is something unique about this is this was the first time an mRNA technology-based vaccine has been approved for human use. And this is one of the new thing as well. And however, similar technology has been used, not the mRNA, but there are other uh, uh, RNA, cRNA type of technology has been used. In 2018, there was the FDA has approved first ever product before. But this something mRNA product is the first ever product that has been approved. So now let's talk about the uh, safety and effective part. So what exactly safety means. Safety means, first of all, 
any vaccine that is approved for human use, uh, it is very important to understand that is it safe or not? So that is what called safe. What is that exactly safe means? Safe means does it cause any serious illness or serious sickness after using this vaccine? Or does it have any serious side effect which can be very harmful than benefit? However, safety uh, also looks into these small side effects, but there are small side effects like pain in the site of injection or headache or fever, like those are minor side effects are possible. That will be also studied, but uh, that will let go ahead and give the approval of the safety as well. So, and then, um, so safety is always the most important priority in um, vaccine or including any medication approval process. And then what is the next important point that is looked into this uh, vaccine approval is effectiveness. Is it effective or not, right? Because safety is important, but same time effectiveness important. What if, you know, what, like, for example, water is safe, right? Water is safe. Does it mean that water can help to prevent viral infection? So, therefore, what is important is it is also important that we should figure out whether, how effective it is. And once we know how effective, what percentage is effective, so those are the points that, that will be studied in the clinical trials before a drug is approved. So all the drugs or vaccines, whenever they uh, are made, they have to go through the approval process. Like every country has a agency, a federal agencies that is responsible for drug approvals. Like in United States, uh, there is a Food and Drug Administration, FDA, uh, is agency which is responsible for approval for vaccines as well, and also the other medications. So like Canada has a Health Canada, and like other countries also have the other uh, their uh, approval agencies. So that means any drug that needs to be marketed in those countries, they have to go through this approval process. Then only those drugs can be marketed and sold in those countries. So if you want to sell any vaccine or any medication in those countries, then eventually that has to be approved. Uh, let's say if you have vaccine, if you want to use that in Canada, that has to be approved by the Health Canada. Even though it can have approval from FDA, doesn't mean that that will be used in Canada. It requires Canadian uh, agency, which is the Health Canada approval. Same thing, if can Health Canada might have approved, but if FDA has no approval, we cannot use that product in the United States. So I like to present you some stepwise how this approval process takes place uh, according to the FDA. So here, uh, and just before I start give you that step-by-step -step process, it is very important to understand, uh, in general, uh, it takes around 10 years to be a vaccine to be approved, right? So, um, but now this is the first time in the history it has happened within one year, well, one calendar year, the vaccine has been approved. So it doesn't mean that there are, uh, because of those short period there has been, uh, they have made the cutting, cut the corners or maybe it is not safe or not effective, no. It has went through the same procedure as uh, generally vaccine takes 10 years and even one year they have gone through the same procedures. I will just give you a uh, first overview what kind of steps involved uh, it approval. Uh, so first, generally, a lot of time goes in identifying uh, what is that product that is can help, right? What is the vaccine that can work as a product? That means that requires lots of basic research, lots of uh, uh, lots of commitment from the serious research, scientific research, and identifying a lead product which is work on, which works like a vaccine that takes several years to identify them. So once you identified a lead product, uh, it will be tested on uh, and animals like uh, that is those kind of studies are called preclinical studies. 
So what exactly preclinical pre studies means? Preclinical studies are done on animals or tissue culture, etc. Like for example, uh, it is done on most commonly you see in the labs, there's the mice, like mice is the best example, or some other animals also tested. So those are first take are done before even start doing that human studies. So once they have safe into those animals, if the animal survived and also has a drug, drug is working well, and then, uh, well, for example, uh, mice, mice generally have no, um, generally they don't have the um, COVID, but how then how they tested on the mice? Well, they, they genetically modified the mice to cause the COVID infection. So you introduce the COVID infection in the mice and modify them, infect them, and then obviously try to treat them to see if that infection is going well or not. So those kind of studies are done preclinical. So once preclinical studies, uh, once it has been done and the data is safe and effective, then drug will be applied to the FDA application. That kind of application is called investigational new drug application, also known as IND. So IND is uh, the starting process for phase one to phase three trials. Phase one to phase three trials. So in the next slide, I will show you more details on the phase one and phase two, phase three trials. And that generally, uh, the phase three trial is the largest one, which takes several thousands of candidates for testing. So this is, a, this is the major time consuming once uh, period for this one. So once these studies, all these three phases show that drug is safe and effective, uh, that will be reviewed by FDA. And FDA has a one committee for vaccination that is called WORPAC. WORPAC is Vaccine and Related Biological Product Advisory Committee. So this committee review those, all the detail, and this committee is um, uh, it's not related to industry experts. They have no connection to the industry expert, and also they're independent um, uh, from the federal government. I mean, they are outsider from those, uh, so that way they cannot influence on the decision of approval on, um, uh, from the data. So that means those are candidates who uh, generally should make honest um, uh, honest review, and then they should make a, uh, if they approve or not. If they approve it, then drug will be marketed or vaccine is marketed in the United States. And remember that once the vaccine is approved, doesn't mean that it is out of hope and forever they will be marketing and selling. No, it is not true. Even after approval of this vaccine, there is a large, uh, that is something called phase four uh, studies. What it, that means is uh, there is a safety of them and also they're monitored. That means there is an adverse drug reaction reporting system in the place. Any healthcare professional that they found someone is causing some long-term side effect or any kind of side effect which is not known in the clinical studies, those will be reported to um, those to the adverse drug reaction reports. So therefore, those data also generated with the phase four trials. So these are the steps involved. So I like to go over uh, some high yield points here. So what is something uh, really something good thing happened in the United States is in early um, earlier of this 2020 year, 20 this year, uh, United States government has created a, a operation warp operation warp speed OWS, and this operation warp speed was created or. Um, uh, it is a kind of government, U.S. government and pri uh, private, that means the pharmaceutical manufacturing, like big, giant pharmaceutical companies collaboration. So in that case, government has fund, uh, has, uh, has 
the main purpose of having this operation warp speed was to facilitate and develop a manufacture and distribute COVID-19 vaccine. That was the aim and also other therapeutics and diagnostic for uh, for the uh, for the uh, vac for the covid because that was one of the good thing that has been done so this is a kind of a, it is the same model they have used they generally the uh, united states use that in the wars whenever they go for the war generally they have some kind of operation and the name is given and there are team who will work for those so this is what operation warp speed uh, is uh, part of the collaboration with the manufacturers and exit, uh, and then they are working on their, and then releasing and also distribution. Now, just this week, uh, as we speak, now the vaccines have rolled out to the all over the United States and also here in Canada and also in UK. So that means those are operations on distribution in the process is taken care from this operation war speed. In United States only, and also we already discussed about this uh, work pack, uh, which is a committee which review the uh, phase trials, and then before they make sure that the drug is approved, uh, the vaccine is approved. So let's move on to the next uh, one. So here I was mentioning about those three uh, phase trials because FDA is the only uh, approved the any vaccine that is safe and effective. Otherwise, that will not. So imagine going through <coughs> excuse me, several exams to get the license. So you have to go through several steps of the licensing process. So same way, the drugs have to go through several phases to get to the market. So there are three major phases in the FDA. One is called phase one. So phase one trials generally done uh, uh, in a small number of patients, population, about 20 to 100 patients are tested. So in this one, uh, only healthy volunteers are tested. Healthy means they have no other condition. I mean, they, are, they have no uh, COVID infection. They have no other infection. They are normal, healthy person. And they have no other chronic illnesses as well. So why, why would they give it for this? trial for a healthy person, you wonder, right? Why would you choose the healthy people for this one? Well, the reason why, because you want, the main purpose of phase one trial to see, is this any serious problem with this? Is there any serious side effect with this vaccine? I know there are minor side effects can happen, uh, like, as I mentioned before, like could be at the site of uh, injection could be pain or a slight fever for a day or two, or could be a, a headache or some other minor side effects. But that should not be any serious, it should not be very harmful, or person should not get sick. So therefore, uh, these are generally those what's, what those those side effects happen, etc. with this study. So therefore, the healthy patients are selected for this. And once uh, that is approved, then it goes to the phase two trials. So in the phase two trials, several hundreds of volunteers are tested. It means you have a larger group than the phase one. Because here, uh, there are patients uh, also tested for the effectiveness and also the safety. So for example, I tested for how this immune system responding to the vaccine. Is it working exactly as it is expected to, as we thought theoretically? Is it working the same way as it done in animals and other models before? So all the data will be compared and to see how this affects it. So, and the longest trials from this, all the three is phase three trials. And this is also very important trial because it takes a long time to do this one. So the reason uh, why, because this enrolls thousands of hundreds and thousands of volunteers. So for example, in this, uh, one of the, another important um, outstanding point uh, in this COVID clinical trial is phase three trials, because in the phase three trials, uh, this COVID phase three trials, they had enrolled highest number of patients, like 
30 to 40,000 patients have been tested in the phase three trials. The reason why, because there are so many patients were available, they weren't willingly available to go for phase three trials. Generally, it's very hard to get thousands of patients to do phase three trials for rare diseases or other medical conditions. But in this case, that was uh, had a pretty high number. That is another good thing that tells you that uh, any any complication can come up. But um, so that is a one important point. And another important point in the phase three trials is it test compares the two group. That means it compared with the patient who take the vaccine versus patient who did not take the vaccine. That means it does also compare, mean people who are given some placebo, mean they are given kind of normal saline instead of giving vaccine. So those are information is done randomized, mean blinded, means they don't know whether they're getting placebo or they're getting a vaccine. So this is something done in the phase three trials. And the phase three trials are, um, which is also to look for those two points of safety and effectiveness. So therefore, uh, this is something very important component of the, uh, of the approval of the drug. So here are some high yield point that you should know that, um, like say, if you have a question, what is the decisive phase for drug to be marketed? Uh, decisive phase is the phase three trial, which is includes um, double blind randomized clinical trials. And remember all those vaccines that are tested, they are made into the batches. Each batch is called, has a specific number that's called lot number. And those lot numbers, all lot numbers manufacturers uh, have to be tested. They have to put it for test and they make sure that all lot numbers are safe. And also remember all those sites, those are vaccines are manufactured, those are uh, inspected by the FDA time to time and make sure that they're regularly they're inspected and make sure they make sure that they are following the good manufacturing uh, practices. So those are the important points in the approval process. So now let's move on to, uh, let's look at the sum of the data, uh, which I picked up from the clinical trials information. So comparing the two different vaccines, one is Pfizer um, bio and tech vaccine, and also the Moderna vaccine. So here I like to give you some quick overview. What are the key high yield points you should keep in mind? Which is first of all, one should know that this primary endpoint for the study. That means the what is the aim when they studied this one? The primary endpoint of the study was to test the symptomatic COVID patient. That means, sorry, COVID, that means not the patient, but symptomatic means the main purpose of giving this vaccine to uh, prevent COVID symptom. So what that means is it is not studied for preventing infection. So that means one can still can have infection, we don't know, but it is mainly aimed to see if they had any symptom or not. So that was the main end point. So that means people who have received the vaccine, they may get infection uh, or they may not get infection. No one, right now there is no data because the study was not aimed for that purpose. Study aim was to look if they get symptom or not. That means uh, those studies shows uh, they have get the symptom or no symptom. That's all it can study. So I was mentioning about the number of patients in the phase three trials because I'm talking about phase three trial data. Uh, for Pfizer has studied 40,000 patients, 40,277, which is quite a big number, which is normally not seen that big number for phase three trials for most other vaccines in the past. And Moderna has done 30,418 patients, which is another big number as well. And in that clinical studies, they had uh, patients here, different, slightly different ages. They have patients older than 12, year and age and here uh, had a Moderna has 18 year age. So the most important point that you should mind uh, look into this one is the effectiveness, right? Now I'm talking about effectiveness. So uh, effectiveness, according to the data of the Pfizer, it shows that 95% effectiveness, which is a 
amazing information uh, that is really not that common to see that kind of effectiveness. So what does it that means is 95% effective and here it says 95% confidence interval. That means 95% of the time the true results were in this confidence interval. So this is what the confidence means. Those, this is these numbers of the confidence intervals are very narrow. That means that's a very, very, uh, very credible information according to the data. So, and that is something very good point as well. So Moderna vaccine as well has a very similar close to that one, 94.5%. That is amazing again. And confidence interval, 95% confidence intervals means the true uh, re results were fall between this range. So that means that is something another very, very good, uh, very effective, that means the very credible information. Well, and uh, study designs, that means these studies have been conducted in the phase three trials, randomized, double blind, uh, double blind randomized control trials. What that means is there are uh, candidates who have selected randomly and also these candidates were uh, blinded, means uh, half of the patient will receive placebo and half patient will receive the vaccine, real vaccine. So that means um, actual vaccine, yes. So that means they have 50-50. Uh, so that means uh, those are blinded, means the investigators don't, don't know who got those medications, who are the vaccine. And also patient doesn't know they have to get the vaccine or not. So that means that was a very helpful. Having randomized double blind clinical trials are considered as one of the most credible design of all clinical design. Means any results come from this one is considered as highly acceptable results. Good or bad, but these are very good. I mean, the results are considered as, studies are designed considered as one of the good designs. And the another uh, important thing about this uh, vaccine were these vaccines have been studied in, uh, and means um, the clinical trials have done in the multi, multi race, mean various different races, and also studied in the different age, and also patients who have a chronic conditions as well. So there is a something called exclusion, exclusion criteria. What that means is in exclusion criteria means uh, these people, this group of patients have not included in the studies. That means, for example, generally most studies, they don't include initially a pregnant woman because that's not ethical to give a, a clinical trial for pregnant women or breastfeeding women. So therefore, in the studies that are not included, that means there is no evidence of safety in pregnancy. Uh, so, so therefore, this uh, is not included. And then also um, patients who had a previously COVID symptom, they were not included. And someone who have a significant immunosuppression, mean like a serious low immune condition such as HIV or severe immune cell cancers or uh, chronic kidney disease, like someone whose immune system is terribly compromised, then they are not included in that. And also people who are taking uh, some prevention medication for COVID, like, you know, there were a lot of uh, things where information was misinformation were there. People are using sometimes hydroxychloroquine or they were trying to take some other lot of preventive uh, medications, hoping that prevention uh, prevent them getting COVID infection even though there was not sufficient information, but it was a panic situation. So therefore, uh, there are so many small, small studies were available and people are using those small study data and using those medications. So in to make it short here, I can say um, the effectiveness is uh, given here. Uh, just keep in mind, um, maybe I'm not hoping direct questions on them, but the comparison of confidence intervals are important and the number of patients who has been tested, which is a very significant. And the type of study designs are something, another important key point for exams that you have to know. So all this data, which I picked up, uh, reference from the clinical trial.gov, 
uh, which is published by the United States National Library of Medicine, uh, which is considered as a credible information source. So therefore, this source of information is open access to the public. Anyone can access this information. Those who wish to know more about this information, uh, you can definitely visit to this clinicaltrials.gov to get the more details on clinical data information. Right. So, however, I um, next also next I like to discuss more about the um, some the vaccine labeling. So again, I use the for vaccine labeling. I use the another credible reference uh, that is published by United States National Library of Medicine. This is called Daily Med. Uh, you will can you can also access this information. They publishes all. FDA drug approved or FDA vaccines and drug approved monograph, which is published here. So therefore, you can also use this information as a credible source. So let me give you some heads up on uh, what kind of uh, storage conditions and what are the labels present on these vaccines. So here, uh, first, let's talk about Moderna vaccine. Moderna vaccine is uh, injection given as injection, and uh, this is stored into the uh, frozen, stored frozen between minus 25 to range from minus 15 to minus 25 temperature. So in Fahrenheit, it's going to be minus 13 to 5 Fahrenheit, which is and it says until ready to use. What it, that means is uh, cannot be kept uh, even before means even you need to transfer. This is also known as cold store cold storage condition. That means during transportation, handling, etc., these uh, have to be always have to be frozen. Only before using them, that has to be taken out. And also remember, uh, no preservatives are present in this one. A lot of time people worried that there could be something preservative which may not be safe for them, but there is no, as per this one, and the one point is important is when there is no preservative, storage becomes very critical. So therefore, storage conditions are very critical here. And after first use, uh, means generally it is supplied as a 10 dose vial, like each vial has 10 doses in it. Remember that one. And that means after using first dose, uh, you have to finish the, all the 10 doses within six hours. If someone who did not, if any doses left over, even after six hours, then you cannot reuse them, you have to discard them. And also it is important to record the date and time of the first use of that uh, first dose from those 10 doses. So this is about the, uh, this is an intramuscular injection, and also it just comes as a suspension. And uh, also remember, I forgot to mention that uh, FDA has approved this as an emergency use authorization. So just one point, just to keep in mind. And now next, let's look at the Pfizer storage condition. That has another typical interesting ones. That means uh, Pfizer uh, BioNTech. COVID-19 vaccine also supplied as a suspension and intramuscular injection. So this comes as a multi-dose while again, however, there are five dosages of 0.3 mils. So you have to dilute this one by normal saline, which is just like a sodium chloride, normal saline. And I mean, it is a isotonic preparation. And the storage conditions are very interesting here, which is prior to the dilution, store at minus 80 to minus, which is extreme cold, sub-zero temperatures, which is in the Fahrenheit, which comes to be uh, pretty uh, minus 112 Fahrenheit to minus 76, or uh, minus 80 to uh, minus 60 Celsius. So those are the temperatures which is much uh, cooler than, obviously, colder than uh, the uh, Moderna vaccine. So, and also here, uh, one can keep it to uh, discard after six hours if you have not used any leftover dosages within the five dosages, you cannot 
use them if it is six hours, more than six hours. And also it has a five dosages and also it claims that there is no preservative. That means generally preservatives also helps to keep the uh, vaccines at longer at room temperatures. But since there is no preservative storage conditions or one have to follow it religiously to make sure that um, uh, that has followed into the administration methods. So this is about this one. So just to make it finally, uh, um, to make it summary that here, there are several countries have already rolled out these vaccines in Canada, Health Canada has approved this vaccine and rolled out uh, and already uh, first dose has been administered. And United States have government like Operation, uh, like Operation Warp. So um, that has uh, pledged that they're gonna give a 20 million dosages by end of this year, 2020. And uh, let's see how it's gonna work. And United, uh, in UK, the medicines, the approval agency is, sorry, the approval agency, the medicines and healthcare product regulatory agency and also in uh, basically the uh, Pfizer BioNTech. BioNTech is a German company. They they develop those lipid nanoparticles and mRNA, which is same as, as Modern now did. So uh, they, they are the one who did that lot of work. And they also have approved this vaccine they already rolled out in Germany. And Japan also have in the process of rolling out our approval process. So like this, that means this is something very important event of this century and hoping that we will have some important questions expected in the exams. So finally, to make it summary, I would say um, uh, uh, just uh, three stages of uh, FDA approval process, which is given there phase one, phase two, phase three. And then also the important point is that uh, mRNA, uh, lipid nanoparticle technology that is used by Pfizer BioNTech, and then also other um, technologies. So those are the summaries of this one. I, those are the high yield points that require to be focused. In addition to that, uh, keep uh, looking for uh, our videos of pharmacy prep, uh, videos for more upcoming videos. We have separate videos for genetic vaccines and also we have separate video for um, vector, uh, viral vector vaccines as well. So with this information, I like you to all of you to thank you for, thank you very much for listen, giving your time to listen this one. For any question related to this, if you want to know more about this information, please feel free to contact me on this number. Uh, you can also text me on this number. Uh, I'll be very happy to get back to you on that one. Or if you have need more information, you can also reach to our website. That is pharmacyprep.com. And here is our email address and always feel free to contact. And thank you and have a good day.